Hello and welcome to this edition of Running on Love with God. My name is Lori Michelle and I was awakened in April of 2009 to the voice of our creator Hashem God and he said go get pen and paper and start writing this down and I listened and here I am all these years later broadcasting in Israel and I'm here with my friend who is in Chicago, Anna Marie, hello. And every week we do a program called Running on Love with God. And Emory asks me very provocative questions about timely topics that need to be spoken about and taught to the world because it's the end of days that we've all been hearing about our whole lives. We are in them right now. And the end of days means we all need to get together and learn what Hashem God requires of us and learn how to get it right because the clock is ticking on all of us and we must get it right and live a life that is godly. And now is the time. So tonight's program I named, why do they attack you if you're different? They teach be true to yourself and then attack you when you do. How do you remain strong in the face of recriminations? I posted this on Facebook and I received quite a few thumbs, meaning a lot of people liked what I had to say about this. So I'm gonna open the conversation to you, Anna Marie, about the need to be right and how people argue about their positions and they get loud and angry and we're seeing protests all over America with people espousing that they have the truth and their party or their group has it right. And if you say anything to the contrary, you are met with recriminations and anger and violence is erupting. It seems everybody who's a good person, and there are many, has this insistence that they're right and they know how to be a good person and they have some corner on the truth. And the truth is we all have a piece of the truth and it's important to come together now and learn exactly what Hashem God desires from us and get it right and connect in the truth. So I'll open the, the floor up for you. My first question is, but what if you actually are right? Because there are some beliefs and positions that are just clearly evil and wrong. And isn't it important to hold on to being right when you actually are? How do you know if you're right? You may believe you're right. You may believe that you have the truth, but only God himself knows always what the truth is. So it is very tricky. If you believe you're right and you've been taught something your entire life, and now you're 30, 40, 50 years old, and you're arguing what you believe is the holy truth. It's in your Bible. You were taught this from your clergy. If you're Christian, you were taught this by your priest. If you're Jewish, your rabbi taught you this. And how do you know that it's right? So it's very tricky when you think that you have, you're holding the truth and you're up against someone who's speaking something that's opposite of what you believe in and what you've been taught. So what's the answer? Do you go up against this person? Let's take a, a clear example, a clear example of Charlottesville, which we spoke about last week. There was a protest in Charlottesville and the neo-Nazis and the white supremacists had a permit to speak evil in public and argue that a statue of a Confederate general should stay there, but it became a platform of hate. As a good person who believes in God, we believe that that's evil and wrong. And I'm here to tell you it is wrong. But the people who were espousing this hatred probably believe in God too, and believe that they have the truth. So people from the other group 
meaning the left-wing liberals who are against any form of hate group, haters or hate group, showed up but looking for a fight, a physical fight, showed up with bricks and pepper spray. And they believe that they were in the right. But you could be dead right, couldn't you? You could yeah. show up and you could be someone who does not believe in racism or prejudice of any sort and resort to behavior to defend your need to be right, and you might be right, and succumb to the evil yourself, the evil inclination. You think through your anger, you act through your anger, and your ego, and your need to prove to the world that you are right, you are righteous, and you're on the right side of God, and you are gonna defend God to the death. So, go no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Technically, then, in the Charlottesville situation, the people who came to protest the hate speech, they were right. It was just their techniques that you say were not correct. I wasn't there to hear everything they had to say. But let's argue about what if you're right. That was your question. Yes. What if you're right? What if you have the truth? Yes. So let's say, let's argue that the people who came to fight and protest the haters, the Nazis, were right. They chose the wrong behavior. They chose to speak venom. They chose to bring weapons. They chose to break the law. So there's an old expression that I was raised with, maybe you were raised with it too, two wrongs don't make a right. Violence begets more violence. Hatred, hating the thing that you're against makes you a hater. Instead of being a hater, defending your truth of hating the haters, be a lover, stand for love. Okay, do you have any techniques or any ideas how that could be done? Like how should the protest have played out in Charlottesville? What would have been the right way to go about it? I already said that the, go ahead. So. Is it better not to have protested at all? Should they have just ignored? No, no. When you see an injustice and you see something that's intolerable, you show up and you voice your opinion, especially when you know you're on the side of God and love. You show up and you show up in a peaceful way, in a godly way, and you don't break the law yourself. And you don't get into a shouting match of anger and use the same vicious tone that the haters are using. I saw, and I don't know what happened as a result of it, but there were murders, as we know, in Barcelona. And I read there was about a half a million people who showed up in solidarity and they had signs that said, I am not afraid, meaning the haters won't scare me. That was appropriate. I don't know exactly what went on, so I don't want to go too far. There could have been problems, I don't know, but the little bit that I read sounded appropriate. A half a million, 500,000, a lot of people showed up in solidarity and in love. And that's the way of God. In the image that you used to promote this show, you, the image says, the words say, be yourself and show your true colors. Yes. Inner strength comes from God, not people. My question is, how can you tap into the inner strength from God when you're going through a time when you're feeling very defeated or very ostracized or very alone? Well, you're speaking to the right person <laughs> because I myself had to walk away from almost every relationship I ever had 
to speak my truth and to live my purpose, which is this. An awful lot of people don't understand or believe that I really, truly speak to God, the one. Some people don't think it's possible. Some people are waiting for someone that looks different, maybe a different gender, maybe someone who's more religious. You know, look at me, I'm wearing short sleeves, <laughs> okay? And there you are, I'm not making fun. I appreciate people who dress modestly, long sleeves, cover their hair. In many religions, they do so. I'm not here to change the rules. I'm not here to criticize anyone's observance of the rules. I speak directly to the one, and he tells me what he desires from me. I'm not changing anything, and I'm not speaking against anyone or any one group. What I'm speaking out against is evil. And the only one who has the right to judge is Hashem God. He is the final arbiter of everything there is. And so you said, how do you reach for God? What would, repeat your question exactly as you stated it. Okay. So your intro image said inner strength comes from God, not people. And my question was, how can you tap into that inner strength? The way I tap into that inner strength is through prayer. My prayer is personal conversation, my own words to Hashem God. The most important prayer that you can pray is in your own words, with your own intention, through your own desire to connect to Him. There are many prescribed prayers that help us and you said, well, what happens if you've lost your way? I think that you said, you know, you're feeling defeated. Sometimes when you're feeling defeated and you simply have lost your way and you don't even know what to say to God, those prescribed prayers can be very therapeutic. And there are many. Reach for a prayer book. Read the prayers. The thing that I want to impart in the most loving and deepest way is he is real he's not fathomable in ordinary human terms he is reachable and he listens and he knows everything and when i said be yourself and show your own true colors and i said inner strength comes from god not from people why did i say that because one of the most healing things that you can do for yourself is lose the need for the good opinion of other people. When you place people above God himself and you make their opinion more important than your own, you become subservient and a slave to people. The only one who is above us or should be above us is, a, is God himself. We can revere other people and look to them for help, but their opinion shouldn't make or break us. When Once you turn your power over to another person, you become a slave and you become, you become weak. God empowers us. People weaken us. They can, not, not always, but people can tend to weaken us. And I mentioned in my cover to this program that we're taught, be true to yourself, show your own true colors, be creative, be yourself. The minute you do that, you face the recriminations and the anger of friends and family. If you have the same last name as someone, suddenly they think they own you. You're disgracing our family name. How dare you believe that? How dare you say that? They are not your judge. God is your judge. So even if 
they're looking out for your best interests and they have good reasons for admonishing you, you should still move forward with your own path. Yes? At the end of the day, you're answerable personally to Hashem God. If you're a young child, you revere your parents and you revere your elders. And even as an adult, we revere people who are well read and they study our teachers. But at the end of the day, we're responsible for our own choices. And yes, you need to choose. You're accountable for your own choices and every word that you utter out of your mouth. So Anne-Marie, you could say to me, you know, Lori, I really think you're on the wrong path and you need to stop these programs. I'm not doing them with you anymore. I hope you don't. Mm -hmm. But if you said that, I would say respectfully, Anne-Marie, thank you for taking me this far. I love you, but this is something I must do. I'm, I know that I'm serving God and I know I'm doing the right thing for humanity, but thank you very much for your kind opinion. Because at the end of my life, at the end of the day, he judges me. You're not my judge. You're my friend and you're my supporter. And so that goes true for your parents and your clergy and everyone. We have a direct relationship with God and he is our judge, not people. Speaking of people, when they're trying to give you advice and, or they make you, and they anger you, um, how can you react in peace and love when your immediate emotion is anger? How, do you have any techniques for turning that off? I'll, I'll speak as a parent. My children come to me all the time for advice. They often listen to it and sometimes they're on their own path. They need to make their own choice. Sometimes the choices are damaging and hurtful. They're not good choices, but you love them anyway. So the answer is, why would you get angry? It's their journey, it's not yours. You have to separate yourself from their life and your life, their choices, so long as it's not damaging you personally. In other words, they're not stealing from you. They're not harming you physically. They're not harming your family physically. If they're coming to you for advice of, the, of their own affairs, their own life, should I marry this boy? Shouldn't I marry this boy? And you give them every reason to walk away from that boy. Don't you marry that boy. That boy has a bad reputation, yada, yada, yada. And the person says to you, you know, I love him. I'm going to marry him anyway. What are you going to do? Get angry? Of course not. Are you going to say, I'm not coming to your wedding because you're marrying someone I don't think you should marry? No, it's, it's their choice. It's their life. And you wish them well and you pray for a good outcome. My children are on a path right now that I approve of, that I thank God every day of their choices are being right there in line with Torah and God, and I'm so grateful. But I say every day, if one of my children decided to ditch it all and join a rock and roll band and become an atheist, I would be upset for them because I would believe they're on the wrong path and they're hurting themselves. It's not about me. It's about my children and I would pray for them. Being angry because I need to be right and they need to listen to me and it's about me, it's not about me. My children have their lives of their own and people that come to you for advice, it's their journey. Let them choose. When you talk about the need to be right, how, I, I think that's, how do you let go of that? Or is that just part of human nature that we get locked into positions and then we feel like we have to prove that we were right to have that position? Hashem says having an ego is a choice, believe it or not. And it's a choice that every human in the world seems to make. Everybody seems to have 
their ego, their persona, their need to be right, to defend themselves, to defend their choices, to push their agenda. It seems to be business as usual, but it's not the way of the future. The way of the future, the way of the world as we move forward with the world being uh, redeemed, the new world order that we're heading into, ego will be something you resist. Ego is not good for us. This need to be right and have an, your own agenda and you're thinking about yourself is not godly. It's evil. Believe it or not, ego is evil. E for evil. Because you're putting yourself and your own desires ahead of the person you're speaking to or the people around you. It's about you. It doesn't compute to me, frankly, ego. Why would you have this need to have your agenda win? What's in it for you if the other person feels put upon and loses? So long as they say, you're right, Anna Marie, I agree with you, and now you feel better? Is that winning? I'm no. no, it's not. Okay, no, 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 it's not. But don't we need some ego in order to get things done? I mean, isn't ego kind of equivalent to confidence? I had this argument with a brilliant woman that I love very much. She was a businesswoman who... I had a relationship with, a business relationship with, and we argued one day at lunch. She said, you need an ego. It's very important. It strengthens you, and you must have an ego in order to succeed in the world. And I said, no, I disagree. I don't believe that not only do we need, don't need an ego, but it's detrimental to our world. And I let it go. Right there, I am positive that I'm correct. There is no equivocation. An ego is evil. Completely e evil. Why does it make you feel strong? Because it's narcissism. It's your ego elevates you. It makes other people around you subservient. I'm the smartest person in the room. I know better, that's ego. Makes you feel elevated. Everybody else is just a notch lower and ego. Hashem is the smartest, most wise being in all the universe. And he never has to say anything. He just is, it's just. When I say to Hashem God, you're wow. Wow, you, you know everything. And he'll say, I know. He's the only being in the universe who could say, I know, but not with one speck of arrogance or ego. I know. It's just what I am. I am what I am. In your lunch, where you had the conversation about ego, when you just said you absolutely knew that you were correct. Yes. Isn't it your responsibility? But then you let it go because you didn't let your ego intrude. But isn't it your responsibility when you know you're correct about something to help teach the other person what's correct? There's another expression. And I'm, I'm actually borrowing from Wayne Dyer, may he rest in peace, which is kind of a funny expression because they're not resting in peace. They're working for world peace right now. But... Um, Wayne Dyer had said to lose the good opinion of other people, that that was something that you should, the need for the good opinion of other people. And um, repeat your question. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I was thinking of Wayne Dyer and I just went. Okay, no, I, I was talking about your lunch conversation where you said that right. you- Do I have an obligation yeah. to, to say <laughs> something? Right. Right. And he, Wayne Dyer also said things like, I can choose peace instead of this. 
She wasn't ready. She, he also said these, I'm, I'm gonna steal a lot from him. I read his books over the years. He said, um, when the student is ready, the teacher arrives. She wasn't ready. She was looking at me as her student. She wasn't ready to learn from me as her teacher. I was a notch below her in this relationship. I pray for her, I love her, she was wrong. Ego is evil. And in, also in the words of Wayne Dyer, it is edging God out. When you choose ego, you are choosing something against God, evil. So, and, and by the way, you and I did a program, a private program, where you asked me questions about Wayne Dyer, and Wayne Dyer got things wrong. And I said so on the internet that he was completely wrong. He had a mantra that he was teaching people, I am God. <laughs> I was stunned that Wayne Dyer said those words. There were so many things I learned from him that he shared in his books and in his videos and in his programs. But that was one that was completely wrong. And yes, I was obligated to say, Dr. Dyer, eat too, Brute. Oh no, <laughs> you're wrong. We are not God. Um, but the student wasn't ready in that case. So was it my obligation to pound her over the head, take, take a plate or, you know, like, like in Charlottesville, you know, take out my pepper spray and knock her out? No. I said, okay. You, know, you said- you what you want. <laughs> You said you didn't say anything because you knew she wasn't ready. No, I said it, what I had to say. It wasn't received. She was arguing that, no, you're wrong. And I, well, the minute that someone says, no, you're wrong, is not the right way to engage. She was wrong, but I wouldn't say that to her. No, you're wrong. I'm right. It, it's argumentative. But yes. But it's very, and it's, I don't need to be right. I felt strongly, no, I, I don't agree with you. And she felt very strongly, no, you're wrong. You need an ego. And I, I said, okay, I, I don't believe I'm wrong. Let's let it go. Let's let it go. Because it can get heated. I've been in many conversations where you can have a very good intellectual conversation and a debate, but it becomes heated and the voices get louder. And suddenly, you're wrong, I know you're wrong, my rabbi, my, my priest, my this, my that, said, said this, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I had someone the other day who will remain nameless saying, you know, who do you learn from? And I said, God. I, and they thought I was joking, so I let it go. But that's where I learned from. So I don't, oh, we're on the last two minutes. So I'll let you ask the last question. There you go. Last question, how can we start learning or how can we learn to let go of the need to be right? How can you let go is let go of ego. It's not about you. Stop making it about you. You don't need to win. And you need to start to understand that when we all win, that's when we truly have a victory. If one person wins an argument and there's a loser, there's a loser. We don't win unless we all win. So we have to wait and pause and pull back. And if you're in an argument with someone and they don't see your point of view, let it go and say, you know, we just don't see it the same way. This is the way I see it. Let's change the topic. You don't need to win every argument. There's no point in it. And that's the whole point of learning and coming together, bringing your questions and your information and presenting your ideas and your beliefs. And I'm not here to change your beliefs or your ideas about anything. I'm here to present a perspective that you may not have thought about before. And the perspectives that I'm presenting are godly and uplifting and connecting. 
Let's try to figure out where we agree and where we disagree. Take down the temper, put it down, put it down, and walk away and say, you know, that was a nice lunch. Thank you for the good debate. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this program and you'll go to lauriemichelle.net. There are many programs, we've done many. There is probably over 150 videos of Q and A's and programs. Please watch them, please share this information and let's get together and learn how to get it right because if we listen, learn and work for peace, we will enjoy peace in our world in our time. God bless you. Peace on earth to everyone. God bless you.